In the last video I set myself the task to make an unusual photographic camera using a 3D printer. The camera I began making combines two forms of photography. Slit scan, in which the photographic film passes along a slit to produce an image which removes the time distortion created by a shutter, and a rotary disc camera which was a gimmick from the 1980s. The first camera I made had a direct drive which meant the turning handle was connected to the centre of the rotary disc. And for the second I added an off-centred reduction gear which drove an annulus gear on the rear of the rotary disc. This allowed me to turn the handle almost six times before I made a full rotation of the disc which would hold the photographic paper. But I ran into trouble because I couldn't rotate the disc slowly enough by hand to expose the paper and produce a recognisable image. In this video I attempt to add a planetary gear set to the camera to further reduce the rotational speed of the disc. Ok so if I'm already losing you, you may have to watch the first video if you haven't done so already, although if you have watched the first video I may have already lost you. So planetary gears are a type of gear assembly normally used to increase or decrease torque at the expense of speed. The higher the torque the slower the speed. The most common application for us woodworkers would be in our drills, and you can see some examples on the screen now. Now I don't want to reinvent the wheel with this, so I happen to find an example on Thingiverse, which was published by Aubenc, A-U-B-E-N-C, in uh, May 2012, so it's quite a while ago. I was having trouble importing the files into Fusion 360, so I printed them out, produced a little model and then align that to the camera that I was working on. I took measurements from the printed planetary gear set and then produced the appropriate fittings on the camera's body. I found a few videos of people assembling this particular gear set. I'm not sure who or which was the person who designed it and often the videos were really badly filmed and it wasn't clear how this thing came together so I'll just describe that in this section now. The outside gear with the teeth facing inwards is the annulus or ring gear and the one in the centre is the sun gear. The three between those are the planet gears and these put together produce a set. I put the three planet gears onto an arm which holds each into a set position, in this case with 120 degrees between each one. Get it while it's hot. These are then placed in the centre of the annulus gear. The sun gear has a flange which clips onto the shaft of the arms that hold the three planetary gears. The sun gear is longer than the other gears and bridges the sets, stepping the gear down along each set. The more sets you add, the higher the torque and the lower the gearing speed. I was really struggling to imagine how this worked, which is why I printed this out. I could physically see the parts coming together and understand how I might go about either utilising the design I found or designing something similar. So I probably need a few more stages and essentially if I can replace this handle with the gear on the outside, in fact it looks like an okay size as well, I should be able to get this disc to turn really slowly with one of these. I'm now going to edit the 3D model of the camera. Okay, so I'm going to um, I'm going to modify this section of the um, turning disc uh, so that I can get a positive lock from the planetary gear that I've just printed from Thingiverse. Um, what I've done already, if the mouse will move, is I've extended the back plate so that the heads of the threaded screws can actually fit on the inside, I'll lock those down with a with a nut and then I'll build the planetary system onto the plate uh, so it's a little bit more rigid. Um, okay, so if I so I'm gonna create a new sketch on the top section. My mouse is a bit shit at the moment. I'm gonna do so make a circle, it's about eight point two plus the outside and then I'll we'll measure between basically the lowest point of the tooth it's about five point four right 
I then counted the number of teeth I would need to make space for, in this case 9. I created a sketch for a single tooth spaced between the two circles I just drew, and then performed a circular pattern command to repeat that around the centre point. So what I should be able to do now is do a circular pattern. I'll select these four lines and the center will be over there. And if I make nine, I extruded the sketch downwards cutting into the spur gear, but I was left with a raised cylinder which was part of an original sketch for a mounting screw which hadn't been extruded as far down. I deleted that original sketch and then extruded an additional cylindrical recess for the shape of the marrying part. A circle in there, just make it a little bit bigger so I know it's going to fit, so it's 2.8. And that is, that's 2.2 but we say we'll do it free, we'll extrude that. Minus three, press OK, and that bit should fit this section here. OK, okay so let's see if this fits. I used red PLA as I began to run out of black PLA and I wanted to test the print before committing what I had left. Letting a lot of light through, you can see my fingers in the background. Just to remind me to actually mention this, but... 3, 2, 1... Okay, I've just noticed that... The 3D printer is really loud when the direction of the mic is pointed towards it. I also notice that the disc is pressed tightly onto the section that is meant to hold the slit. And if it remains like that, what it means is when the photographic paper is put inside the camera, plus the slit and the tape to hold those, it's going to be very difficult to turn the paper. The camera, which needs to be light tight, may not also close entirely. So I'm going to drop the surface of the disc back by extruding it one millimeter. So this project is as much about learning how to design for and use a 3D printer to make as it is to build a camera. Definitely turning a lot slower. If I put one of the three D printed threaded rods broke while under tension, but the principle works. So what I will do is replace those with M4 machine screws and hold each section in place, sandwiched between nuts. Okay, I'm printing a new back, and that's because. <coughs> I've worked out the assembly uh, with the planetary gear. Obviously, I'm printing it in black because it needs to be light tight, and uh, red just isn't. You see the silhouette of the disc. Also, as a backup, I went and bought um, some Polaroid film, this Instax stuff. This is the. Well, it says wide, but uh, hopefully that will fit in there on the disc. I've just printed another disc as well. Obviously I needed it to be a little bit thinner. I miscalculated that. Okay, so I'm gonna open the packet of the Polaroid paper. What I'm gonna need to do is take a piece of paper out from the container while um, make sure I don't expose it, so I'm going to do it in this changing bag. Yeah, it looks pretty dark in there. And um, then I'm going to place it through the rollers of this uh, pasta maker um, in the dark room, in the changing bag. Um, I'll probably have to sandwich the Polaroid paper onto something, either some chamois leather or just bits of card.
Okay, I just took some pictures using this mechanism here and I did these outside just to get a bit more light and I think, I think there's some something there you can see a kind of gradient of grey on some of these uh, lines um, which I guess is a positive thing, it means it's been exposed um, that kind of ring I think is a something in the on the slit which I haven't uh, cleared so it has slowed it down enough I'm not sure if that's something there or it's really hard to tell um, I also tried to use the same mechanism with some Polaroid film and to develop it in the pasta maker these two I just exposed the paper um, in the dark room to the red light so I'm, I'm guessing that's kind of the light so these ones I didn't uh, develop on the slit scan um, mainly because these ones are too small and I can't actually rotate them and um, the way this stuff works is the developing chemical is in a sachet here which gets squeezed out like ketchup along the back of the Polaroid and um, it's sealed and I think what happens is the remaining um, liquid gets sort of deposited in this sachet here at the top this pouch at the top um, Pasta maker isn't great for it because the, the actual roller in a Polaroid camera has uh, springs which compensate I think for this last section here and kind of pull apart just so that um, you don't essentially pop the Polaroid. I'm already bored of this so I'm going to have a break and work on something else. Like the bloody CNC machine I'm trying to build. Anyway, thanks for sticking with this one, even though the final outcome wasn't a complete success. I was hoping to use the odd pictures as Christmas decorations, but I didn't produce enough of them to merit putting up a tree. So Christmas has been cancelled. This has been a good learning experience and I feel a lot more confident designing things for and using the 3D printer. But if I come back to this, I'll need to work on some kind of better mechanism to develop Polaroids that isn't a pasta roller. <laughs> Thank you.